Hey everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Today we are doing part two of the undergarments videos. If you missed the first one where we looked at undergarment fails or wardrobe malfunctions, particularly with Meghan Markle, I will link it for you here. But today's video is all about how to avoid those problems, how to get the right types of undergarments that you need, and a bra tutorial of sorts. A real bra tutorial would need to be very, very in-depth and be way too long and boring, but this will at least get you started in the right direction if you struggle with your bras. I'm also sharing wardrobe secrets that ladies who are in the public eye use to have a polished, sleek, nice finish and avoid wardrobe malfunctions. From royals to celebrities, pageant queens, and more, use these tricks to make sure that they have these seamless, polished results and look as great as they possibly can so they can really just focus on the events and the things themselves that they need to do, which is important. See part one if you think not. Towards the end of the video, I'm even going to share with you my personal favorite bras, a measuring guide, my favorite foundation garments and panties that I go to for those seamless, no VPL sorts of finish. Having the right undergarments and having a polished finish does not mean unsexy panties and bras and things like that. Just like things that don't look good or fun to wear. Not at all. You can still wear beautiful undergarments. You can still wear lingerie. You can still wear fancy bras and panties. It can still be sexy. You just have to take a couple extra precautions to make sure that you don't take away from your overall look because of your undergarments. We're gonna start by covering some of the common bra problems that we have. The number one golden rule with bras is that they should be invisible. It shouldn't be obvious that you're wearing a bra. There should be no indication of the bra itself. So in the case of sheer tops, that means you need to go for nude bras or something that's like dark, like a lacy dark look, like a black balconette or something like that with some lace could be acceptable if you're going for that look of layering with a sheer top. Tighter fitting tops demand a smoother bra. Things like seams and darts or lace or designs or even like embroidery and things like that on your bra cups are going to be very visible the thinner the fabric and the tighter the top. A looser shirt and a thicker fabric give you a lot more leeway with what is on your bra cups themselves. Posture bras and smoothing bras are a really great option if you want to go the extra mile to look seamlessly polished because they tend to have a lot more fabric along the back and the sides along here. They're designed to smooth out your figure and create a seamless look. So wherever the band is, it doesn't have as obvious of a finish when you've got a posture bra or a smoothing bra because it's just got more fabric back there. So if you really don't like your band being visible where it it shouldn't be digging into the skin, but who are we kidding? It is clearly obvious. It digs in a little bit because it needs to be tight to be not slipping around and moving around. So if you really don't like that look across your back, then go for ones that have like really big wide bands like long line bras or look for a smoothing or posture bra. It'll solve that problem. As for bustiers or long line bras, they come down underneath where the underwire is across the rib cage, which means across the back, they have a smoother finish where the band is. But if you have a bit of a tummy, those can be really tricky to wear and uncomfortable across this area. There shouldn't be any gaping at the top of the cup across the cup itself. This can be due to having the wrong size or a poor match from your shape to the bra's shape. The structure is just not what you need for your boob shape. And we'll get into more detail on that later. They also shouldn't dig into your shoulders painfully or really intensely, and they also shouldn't fall down the straps. If you have straps falling down a lot of the time, check that they're not too wide set for your frame. If you have narrow shoulders or you buy like a balconette bra where the straps are really, really wide set, that's useful for some tops that have like a really wide square neckline. But if the straps are too wide for your shoulders, they will fall down and slip off of them a lot. This can also happen if you have the wrong band size. If your band is too loose or your cups are too big, then you might overcompensate by tightening the straps too much. This can also make the band ride up in the back. The band should always be parallel to the floor all the way around your body. So that would indicate it's time to get the right size. The base of the bra and across the band, it shouldn't slip or ride up on top of your boob tissue at all. This would often indicate that your band is too loose, so you need a tighter band. It could also be something to do with your boob shape with the bra not being as compatible. Again, we'll get more into that a little later. If your band is uncomfortably tight, 
then you need to size up your band and or your cup size as well. Your boobs also shouldn't be bursting out of the top of your cup. This happens to me literally anytime I think, well, they don't have it in my size, I'm just gonna get it anyway. Then I end up with a quad boob effect. You have boob tissue coming out of the top and then the bras cut cuts into your boobs. It just looks bad. Just don't do it. Don't waste your time or your money. Take it from me. This almost always means you need a bigger cup size. In some occasions, you might need both bigger band and cup size. You also, on the other hand, shouldn't see the cup pull away or lift away from the bust at all. That would indicate most of the time you need to downsize the cup. Occasionally, you might need to downsize both the cup and the band. Or once again, it could be that the shape of the bra is not compatible with your body's shape. If your band does ride up in the back, try adjusting the straps to be a little bit looser. If that creates more problems for you, then the band is probably the wrong size. That covers all of the major bra problems that we tend to run into. Hopefully that helps you to determine kind of where you fall and what you need to do to solve those problems. But when it comes to finding the right bra for you and measuring, we're gonna get to that at the end of today's video. Next, let's talk about tights. Nylons, tights, pantyhose, whatever you call them. Any of them that have a sort of pearlescent finish or sparkle to them, or even fishnet, tend to be widening and less flattering than the almost invisible sort of basic styles. They don't add any visual weight, they're not widening, and they don't compete with your outfits the way other tights tend to. And tights in general don't only create that smooth, seamless base that we're talking about, but they also smooth out imperfections in the skin. So if you're like me and you always have some sort of like bruise on your legs or you have scars or freckles or just dry skin, like anything like that, any of those imperfections, tights smooth all that out and make your legs look a million times better. It's like makeup for your legs, but easier. Go for neutral colors and wear nude tights with clothes that are lighter in color and go for black or brown tights with darker clothes. Keep in mind that your tights should never be darker than your skirt. Your tights, especially like warmer or thicker tights, work totally fine with boots, but stay away from them if you're going to be wearing flats or heels because they just tend to look really awkward around the ankle or have a little extra room in the ankle. Also, do not wear tights that have closed toes if you're wearing open-toed shoes. Stay away from that. When it comes to panties, it's an often overlooked category of undergarments and wardrobe, honestly. Most people think it doesn't matter what undies you wear, but it really, really does. If you're wearing tights, it helps to blur any sort of panty line that you may have. And again, it offers coverage for the belly button as well. But matching the fabric of your skirt or trousers to that of your panties helps a lot to not have any sort of catching or have it be even more obvious where your panties are or where the outline of them are. If you're wearing a slickier, silkier, lighter fabric of a skirt or trousers, then try to wear panties that are a similar texture. I wasted panties are going to be the best option when it comes to avoiding panty lines across the hips where the waistband of the panties are. The higher up that they come or the closer they match the rise of your skirt, the better. They do make high-waisted thongs, which are absolutely fabulous, but high-waisted panties in general just kind of help to avoid those lines across down by your hips. Here's the big secret. You need to buy your panties one size up to avoid panty lines the best. When it comes to panties that are tighter, it's much more obvious and difficult to hide panty lines than panties that are a little looser. So if you're somebody who really doesn't like thongs, then this is especially important. If you're like a solid medium or a medium is even a little snug on you, that's great for days off. But when it comes to wearing your outfits where you're going out or for work or things like that, where you want to avoid a panty line by a large, if you're a size small, usually pretty firmly in a size small, buy a medium. The reason is simply because if you buy true to size and they're a little snug or even slightly tight, then they will cut in on your butt cheeks and it will be much harder to hide that visible panty line. As for style of panty, that's going to be best to avoid a panty line. It kind of depends, but 
obviously thongs are going to be the safest bet because they don't go over the cheeks at all, then you're completely avoiding lines on your cheeks from your panties. So you will not have a panty line in that area if you go for a thong. But if you really don't like thongs or you just want to have some variety or some options for days where you don't feel like wearing a thong, they do make seamless panties and they're pretty good. I have found some brands don't truly avoid panty lines, even though they're called seamless and marketed as ones that won't leave a panty line. The real thing what they're saying is that there's no seam along the bottom where across the butt cheek. They don't have a folded seam and stitching. They're just sort of laser cut that way, but they still can leave a panty line. So what I have found to be even better than seamless panties are ones with lacy cheeks. So the whole cheek area is just lace and usually they're a cheeky style so they kind of come up and have a rounded shape like these from Adore Me and that prevents a panty line really really well in part because I think they have sort of like a scallop sort of an edge they don't have a defined edge but also there is no seam there their fabric is just really thin so these allow no panty line for me even in tight jeans they're really really they work really really great so i would highly recommend those but also if you're if you really want to stick with like cotton or something like that ones that have lace along the seams can sometimes help to blend the panty line really nicely because that seam just kind of helps to diffuse where the panty line is it's not as good as a thong or a lacy cheeky but it's better than regular cotton bikini panties that have a seam. As for which style of panty will suit your shape the best, it has a lot to do with the shape of your butt. So we're gonna go over that really quickly. If you are pear shaped or your butt is a little bit bigger, lower, or there's like more weight to your butt lower, go for bigger leg openings, like high leg and high cut panties that won't chop through your butt cheeks. If you have a more square booty with like high set hips and less roundness, or you struggle with frequent wedgies, a cheeky panty will help to create the illusion of more curve, while hipsters are often a great fit for your shape overall. If you have a heart-shaped backside, which is actually like an upside down heart, those with rounder booties, we tend to have rounder cheeks and panties will often either fit the cheeks or the waist, but not both. So I have found high-waisted thongs and bikinis that have a curved cut along the cheeks to be the best fit, the most comfortable fit, as well as the most likely to not have a panty line. From Adore Me, these are some of my favorite that work really, really well. They don't give me panty lines, they're comfortable, they fit my particular shape really well, so if you have a similar shape and you don't want panty lines, then I would recommend these styles, which they call the Joni, Colleen, Serena, the Helena Thong, the Amelia Lace, and the Ashlyn. From other brands, or from really any brand, or the Lace Trim, or the Lace Butt Cheeks, or Thongs. And if you definitely prefer more coverage, or you just want some more coverage for some times, then a high-waisted bikini or just a regular classic bikini is usually a pretty safe bet. Now that's just my personal experience based off of my shape and pairing them up, trying to find ones that don't leave panty lines, besides just thongs, obviously. And I was quite surprised at how comfortable I found the lacy panties especially from Adore Me, I can vouch for them because like I have tons and tons from them that are lazy and they're just very, very comfortable. They don't wiggle around, they don't ride up, they don't do anything weird, they just were a really great fit. If you are an inverted triangle where your hips and buttocks are narrower and continue to narrow as you get to the thighs, or if you're somebody who says that you have like no butt, then boy shorts are a great option or bikini styles that have smaller leg openings and sit lower on the hip because they can help balance out the smaller buttocks area. Those will help as in terms of matching up what you see like online or on labels when you're looking and shopping for panties, hipsters, bikini, high-waisted, high leg, those sorts of terms. Sometimes we're like, well, I don't know which one will be best or which one will fit or be more comfortable. So hopefully that helps a little bit based on your butt shape, which ones will be more compatible and thus hopefully both more comfortable and less likely to leave panty lines. But again, it really comes down to the fabric, not having it be too tight, and for the safest bet, go for full lace cheeks or thongs to avoid panty lines. Even in pageantry, we were taught to not have 
panty lines show. Like you just should not have your undergarments show because it really takes away from your look. It is distracting and it takes away from your presence overall to have panty lines showing. Just don't do it. In terms of shapewear and foundation garments, shapewear can be a great tool to get a polished finish. And it's also a really great shortcut to have any bra work for any outfit. If you have a bra that fits you really nicely, gives you the shape that you like, it's comfortable, etc. It's in a color that doesn't work with certain tops, then a shapewear top or a smoothing tank can eliminate that problem from your concerns because it will cover up the bra texture or color and make it neutral, just a skin tone nude that can be worn under literally any outfit. You can also instead get some tube tops or bandeaus that just cover just the bust portion to again have the same effect without having to have a whole cami or a whole tank top or a whole shapewear piece. One of these rompers will cover a brightly colored patterned or lacy bra, allowing you to wear any bra you want under any outfit, while also offering some benefit of coverage and smoothing for the panty line areas and whatnot as well. Leonisa has great options for shapewear and they have many that are less restrictive, so less uncomfortable. Like I personally hate wearing shapewear and I would really only do it if needed for an occasion, like a specific occasion. But for the day to day, if you just wanna make something work for your wardrobe or have that little extra layer of protection, then get a size up or even two sizes up in a shapewear item, then it's more like a smoothing item and it's not tight and restrictive the way shapewear can be but it still smooths things out and it still gives you that nude color to give you that smooth finish you need. Commando is another great website for shapewear and whatnot. They have the best no slip thigh high tights. I absolutely love them. And their slips are amazing. They have really great slips there. They are all you need to get a polished finish without feeling bulky or unsexy. Their materials are quality, they have a great fit, they're just sleek and simple, and very much not frumpy in any way. I know some people don't like adding too many foundation layers because it makes them feel frumpy and bulky, but really it shouldn't if you're getting the right fit and fabric, and ultimately under your clothing, it makes such a difference, you look so much more smooth and streamlined, that you end up looking more slender and more fabulous, it never like adds weight to you. Now sometimes shapewear, if somebody's wearing a lot of shapewear or trying to like squeeze in their stomach and things like that, then it can look a little bit bulky and like stiff. The really, really stiff, strong, almost corset-like shapewear that's just a little too intense. Now onto the bra tutorial. Bras are expensive. And we are all so varied in our shapes and sizes that it's no wonder finding well-fitting bras is really difficult, especially finding ones that are also really comfortable and work for your outfits. Like it's a massive and often difficult task. It can also become really expensive really quickly. And while lacy and patterned and otherwise snazzy bras and panties are what we're all drawn to because they're cute or sexy or pretty or fun to wear, it serves us and our wallets better to start with the boring bras and panties and then branch out from there. Once you have your bases covered with some good nude and black basics that are really going to cover all of your needs for your wardrobe, then go for the fun stuff. So always begin with a nude, something that matches your skin tone, whatever that may be. Finding something that's as closest to your skin tone is key. Every girl needs at least one perfectly fitting bra in their skin tone. Don't go for white. Under white tops, white bras show up. You want a nude bra under white tops for sure. So invest your time in finding a nude bra that fits, is comfortable, and is smooth. So a t-shirt bra, one that has smooth cups, no embroidery, no lace-ups, no sparkle or texture or anything like that. This will be the bra that you can reach for for a huge variety of tops. If you don't have any other bra that'll work, that one will. So that's the bra you should splurge on. That's the one that's okay to spend a little more than you want to on is your nude skin toned bra. It's the most versatile bra that you will ever own, despite not being the most beautiful, fabulous, sexy bra. It's still the most versatile and the one that you'll probably get the most use out of. And then get one in black as well, or a really dark color works too, like a navy or something really dark. As for measurements, 
not just for bras, but for all your clothes, always check the size charts and your measurements for buying instead of being like, well, I'm always a size small. No. Or numbers like, oh, I'm a size two or I'm a size four. Don't go with that. Go with your measurements 100% of the time because there's no standardized system for sizing anywhere. Like, I mean, there's general, but companies can make things however they want at whatever measurements they want. So the most reliable will always be checking the size charts. For bust measurements, you want to wear an unlined bra or go braless and use a fabric measuring tape under your bust like so. This is your band size, plain and simple for most manufacturers. Some manufacturers will have an adjustment of like four inches from whatever measurement you have here to what band size you have, but most companies have moved away from that to where whatever your band size is, is your true measurement under the bust. This should be literally right underneath the tatas. It should not be down here towards your waist. You need it on the ribs, right underneath the boobs. If you get an odd number though, because band sizes are usually even, 32, 34, 36, etc. So if you get an odd number, then you can just decide if you need to go up or down. If you're in the process of losing weight or you prefer a band to be a little bit more snug or you just want to get the longest longevity out of the bra, then go the band size lower. So if you get a 33, buy a 32 band because if you really need to, you can put a band ex extender back there. But as the elastic wears out, then you will get more use out of that bra. But if you prefer your bands to be a little looser or you tend to feel uncomfortable with a snug band, then the safest bet is to go up. And most people are suggested to go up, but I do find sometimes it's there's value in going down in your band size because the, that elastic is going to stretch out. And this measurement, it's okay if it's a little bit tight or a little bit snug. Generally speaking, you wanna take it on neutral breath. Just breathe normally. When it comes to over the bust measurement, again, remember it must remain parallel to the floor and do this in front of a mirror, again, so you can turn and check, but don't squeeze. For your over bust measurement, definitely don't squeeze it tight. Be sure that it's kind of, got a little bit of wiggle room to it so that you're not squeezing into your bust or your cup size will be off and it'll be too small. When it comes to over the bust, waist and hip measurements, you wanna go for the biggest measurement that you get while still parallel. Just kind of measure a few different levels across the over bust and across the hip and take the largest measurement that you get from each of those areas and that will be your measurement for that area, not the smallest. And when it comes to your over bust measurement, the distance or the difference between your over bust and under bust or band size is what determines your cup size. So for example, an A cup will have one inch difference between their band size and over the boob size, their bust measurement. If you're bust size is two inches bigger than your band measurement, you will be a B cup, three inches bigger, a C cup, and so on. Oftentimes when shopping for bras, you will see things like demi, balconette, contour, full coverage, and more on the bras, on the websites, or on the tags themselves. And that can be really confusing. There's also no standardized vocabulary, so technically a company could name a bra a balconette, even if it doesn't resemble what most manufacturers would categorize as a balconette. But in general, you can get an idea of how a bra will be structured based on these terms. Things like how much coverage does the cup offer? How high up does it come on the boob? A full coverage bra will come up all the way and encompass most of the boob in the bra. A demi cup will be somewhere around the halfway to three quarters coverage. A quarter cup will be anything below halfway. Oftentimes these are the ones where the nipple will still be exposed. Sometimes you'll see something that has a quarter cup of like a molded bra and then shear the rest of the way or unlined the rest of the way, those are like mixed cup structures. What shape or structure a bra has is indicated by things like balconette, push-up, etc. So a balconette is going to have wide set straps like all the way out to the armpits, very much on the edge, and it's going to be a little bit more straight across, a little bit more rectangular in its shape and structure most of the time. Again, remember this is not standardized, so some bras are not going to line up with this. But in general, a balconette you can think of like a shelf. It's going to have wider straps and a little bit more rectangular structure. Contour is going to have more central straps and a much more natural shape. A push-up bra often has pretty centralized straps because of need for support, but some of them are going to be a little wider set. And push-ups are always going to have 
a decent amount of padding in the bottom of the cup. Plunge means the center of the bra comes down really low to allow for lower cut tops. And sometimes the cups will cut away farther away from the center of the bust. To know how much lining or padding a bra has, look for terms like unlined, which is going to be just fabric, no padding at all. It's going to give you the most natural result, the most natural looking shape. Oftentimes these still have underwire and then it's just fabric across the cups. It's going to be ones like this. They are completely fabric across here. They still have the underwire, but it's sheer across the cup. These are so comfortable. They are so easy to wear and they do, they just give you a relaxed and, and natural look. Lightly lined often refers to a flexible cup still so that it reduces or eliminates nipple show. So, so it, it has still a soft and flexible fabric cup, but it's not see-through the way this one is so that it gives a little bit more coverage, but it is not padded at all. It's oftentimes something like this bra here where they're still really flexible there's no padding whatsoever. It's just the underwire and fabric, but it's solid enough that you don't have nipple show. And this one is a balconette style. It comes out with really wide set straps here and it comes across in a more horizontal frame. Molded cups often have at least a little bit of padding or just a thicker structure than this one, where molded cup bras, you can't squash like this. They're not complete fabric. They are a little bit stiffer than this one. And then there's padded or push-up that have like tons of padding in them. They're very stiff, they hold their form. So that should help give you a little bit more context as to what these terms mean when you're shopping and hopefully point you in the right direction. But the next element to this situation is is our actual boob shape in relation to bra shapes. At first, most of us don't always think about our specific shape in relation to the bra. We're looking at the bra itself. We're focused on, is it cute? Is it pretty? Is it gonna work with our clothes? Is it comfortable? Things like that, features that we want. But really our first priority should be aligning and understanding what our breast shape is and how different bra styles will affect them. So if you have a really round shape bust with tissue that's evenly dispersed or you have implants, or you're just fuller in your breasts, or your breasts sit closer together, a balconette is often the best and easiest fit. If you have a teardrop shape, most weight is lower on your breasts and there's minimal weight on towards the top of your breasts. Many styles will work well, but full coverage can be really tricky as you'll often find they gape at the top of the cup. So try demi bras instead. If you're bell shaped, it's similar to teardrop, but you'll have a little bit more space in between your breasts. You might be full lower on your breasts. Your nipples may point forward or down. A demi will prevent that gaping at the top of the cups or straps, and a lined or padded bra may be a better fit. Relaxed busts often have soft tissue, nipples may point downward, and you'll likely experience gaping at the top of the cups, or the underwire or wireless structure of the bra may slip upward onto your breast tissue. Demi and balconettes with molded cups or padding are really great options to give that support under your boobs. Wide set or east-west breasts means that you have a lot of room in between your boobs. Underwire and bra structures might dig into the sides of your bust and your nipples may point outward or forwards. Push-up bras can help bring the tissue more center, but avoid underwires that are really rounded. Front closed bras can also work really, really well for this bust shape. Low profile or small breasts can have difficulty getting the center gore to stay against your skin. That's the other thing. The gore should be against your sternum, against your chest. Or these low profile breasts might have trouble with gaping or even bras sliding around a little too much. Bralettes and wire-free options will often be the best fit for you. For any breast shape besides low profile who might have the most success avoiding underwire altogether, but for literally everybody else, an unlined underwire bra will allow your tissue to fill the cup and give a great fit. For larger busts like me, you might notice that the top of the cup digs in a tad, like, you know, gives you the quad boob thing. So finding ones that are like demi or balconette that have lower cups can really, really help. Or ones that have lace trim along the top of the cups can help transition that to make it less obvious if the cup's like a little too small for you. Or just keep searching and don't give up and try to find one with the right match that has enough room at the top of the cup. The only downside is that you do have nipple show with these unlined bras that are so so much more comfortable. I always recommend people to try them. I waited to try them for the longest time, but I just find these to be so much more comfortable and, and breathable too. It feels like you're wearing nothing. It's the closest you'll get to having no bra.
Stick-on bras themselves I find to be absolute garbage at my particular size because it's just too jiggly. Like everything's going everywhere. They don't hold you still enough. So I avoid those as much as I can. But if you have smaller bust, you can get away with a stick-on bra when you need something that's gonna work with an outfit. And I just strongly recommend for the day-to-day -day or for casual things or for just like your everyday bras when it doesn't matter so much, I encourage ladies to try the unlined bras because they're just so breathable. The lace and the meshy ones, like it's nice and stretchy and it just feels nice and they still look really cute. So it's really nice to keep them on hand. I also personally really like balconettes and the way that those fit. I just find them really comfortable and they seem to work well with my personal shape. My biggest problem with bras is spilling out over the top because my bra size as a 32G is really hard to find. And I have a small frame on top of it so some bras have just like way too much width to them for my frame altogether and they just don't work and similarly full coverage is often dramatically high on my chest like comes way too high just got to keep looking and I know women with smaller busts have similar problems as well it's not exclusive to busty gals everybody struggles to find the right bra and shape and it just takes searching and testing and finding ones that work well for you. Both Victoria's Secret and Adore Me carries at least some styles in this size. And so if you have a hard time finding your size like me, I would recommend them. If you have a larger band size, Glamorize is a really great option. Luckily, if you do have a hard to find bra size, you can often find them on clearance much easier than the standard cup sizes like A, B, C, and D. Sister sizing is also helpful to know about. If you go up a band size, you wanna go down a cup size. If you go up a cup size, you wanna go down a band size. And sometimes that can help tweak to get the right fit for you. I've also had some success finding bras at Cosa Bella. One thing that Cosa Bella has that I really like, they have a curvy line of bras that is specifically designed for ladies who have a small frame and a large bust like myself. And rarely can you find a brand that has bras specifically designed for small frame, big bust. It's just hard to find. So I really like Cosa Bella for that. And they have lots of other lines like that that are for those sort of tricky shapes or hard to find sizes. They are really expensive though. Layering up on undergarments, especially if you're not used to it, can feel us insane at first. It can feel really silly, but any occasion where it matters to you, do it. You won't regret it. You'll never look back and be like, I wish I didn't have that slip on. That's just not gonna happen. It's not a thing. You'll feel much more confident and secure when you know 100% that you don't have to worry about any of those sorts of faux pas or malfunctions, and then you have the best foundation and best finish you could possibly ask for. You can really focus in on the event and enjoy it and be confident knowing that you're gonna have the best possible outcome to your look and your figure will be benefiting from it. In general, if you are wearing like say a dress for a special occasion, I personally would recommend a good well-fitting bra, a high-waisted thong, nylons, and some sort of slip or romper shapewear. I'm gonna leave as many links as I can below or in the products tab for US viewers. You can just click on the links and they'll take you straight there. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. I hope that this was at least somewhat interesting and most of all, helpful to you. Have a happy day, everybody. Bye.